They tell me this is one of Mr. Edison's newfangled infernal machines. We're not used to these, but it certainly serves its purpose. I want to welcome all of you here to Gettysburg Battlefield. We're going to present about a 15 or 20 minute, might even be longer, presentation on Confederate artillery. As you probably know, we're standing on the ridge from which Pickett's Charge left uh, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on July 3rd, the climactic day of the climactic battle of the Civil War. About 12,000 Confederate infantrymen in three lines surged across this field about three quarters of a mile to assault the Union lines on the opposite ridge. The battle had lasted three days at this point. The two armies had begun to clash on July 1st, northwest of town, and as more reinforcements came in, the battle teetered back and forth. Finally, the Yankees were forced through town up on the Cemetery Hill to our rear. On the night of July 1st, early hours of July 2nd, both armies arrived in force. The Union Army established a two or three mile line along Cemetery Hill behind us, anchored on Culp's Hill to the north, and Little Round Top to the south. On the second day's battle, General Lee, whose army was forming, forming another line about four miles long, in a fishhook fashion, probed the two flanks of the Union Army. There was fighting up on Culp's Hill on the north end of the field, and there was fighting down around the Round Tops on the southern end of the field. Neither of those efforts was successful in turning the Union right or left. So on the third day, General Lee decided he was going to assault the middle of the Union line. If it had worked, it would have split the Union Army in two and may very well have ended the Civil War. It didn't work. You know that story. What we want to concentrate on today is the artillery bombardment that preceded Pickett's charge. For about an hour or perhaps two hours, the accounts vary, about 170 Confederate guns lined up all along Seminary Ridge, from south of here to way north of here, rain shot and shell down upon the Union line over on Cemetery Hill with the objective of softening the line up before the assault. The Union had about 170 guns with which to respond. They did, but they conserved their ammunition for the charge they knew was coming. Unfortunately for the Confederates, they had their guns sighted a little bit too high, and most of their ammunition flew over the front lines and wreaked havoc with the uh, rear echelon. In fact, uh, General Meade and some of his staff were sitting down to lunch when the bombardment began uh, behind the lines, <clears throat> and one of the uh, first Confederate shells to come over the ridge uh, cut in two a private soldier who was serving butter to the generals at lunch. And that was the beginning of the bombardment.